Well, before, you know, uh, when my mom and dad lived here, it was just an open, that's what it was, it was just a lot, you know, and he took good care of it. Well, what were some of the other bars up and down Main Street? Right across the street. On the corner, my Uncle Pete Kennedy, who was my dad's, my mom's sister's husband, he ran a bar right on the corner there. And they just called it the saloon, that's all it was, the saloon. Then up the street, before you got to the Hibernian Hall, Casey's had a bar there. Now you had, there was us, next door was Rickards's, then Cronley's. The house that there burned down, right next door burned down. And that was, when I was a kid, it was Rickards lived there. Ray Rickards was a machinist on the hill. One of his sisters married Russell Hicks, and the other one married John Bonner, who was a big machinist over the hill. Next was Cronley's. Now you heard him talk about Beryl Cronley and John Cronley from the John Cronley run them. All right, his grandfather lived right where that house is still there now. That was their house. Next house was Tucker McGree. The McGrees lived there. Then you had O'Donnell's. Was the next house. It's still there now. Then the next house was Cosmax. All right, between Cosmax and Hibernian Hall was Casey's first bar. That's where the 1934 World Series St. Louis Browns were playing the Cleveland Indians, I think it was, but they had a crystal set in there. You know, they had a crystal radio? Uh huh. And we were going back to school, there was Tucker McGree and me, and a couple more of us, and Mrs. Casey had the crystal set on, and she was telling everybody what the scores were. See, we'd get to St. Louis to school, we're 15 minutes late. I'm trying to explain this to the nun why we were on, where we were at listening to a baseball game on a crystal set now, yet yeah, she thought we were really. <laughs> the little eye. There was the Hibernian Hall. Downstairs in the Hibernian Hall, later, Ed Casey opened his bar there. They moved out of that bar into, and they tore that all down. And that's where the big gap is between O'Donnell's house and where Mike Dodo lives now was Billy the Barber McCarthy. But between his house and Cosmac's house was the Casey's Bar and the Hibernian Hall. It, it, you, we were, you were in the Hibernian Hall. Oh, we had the. How great. about, how about tell them what was on the first floor of the Hibernian Hall? The one side of the first, there was two great big rooms down there. One side was on the north side, right next to the, to Mike Dodo's house, was where Casey's Bar was. Okay. But when I was a kid, there was nothing there. There was just empty storage until he moved in there. The south side of the of the Hibernian Hall. Well, like he used to have, say, uh, rum and sale, you know, clothes sales, and, and they used that for things like that. You had to go up a set of steps to the second floor of the Hibernian Halls, and no landing, straight up. It ain't like the Chinese noodle party, you know, you stop and then go again. Sons of St. George's was the same way. Well, what was on the second floor of the Hibernians? The lodge room. What was in there? Oh, they had the chairs all around. Then you had the stations. You had the president up here. You had the vice president on the back of the room. You had the secretary over here. You had the treasurer. And then all along the side was couches over, you know, the, what they, not couches, but you know how they, in them days they had the, they were like couches up against the wall. They were leather upholstered with the backs were, that were all along both sides of it. And then out in front, we had the great big bay window out in front there. That was the barn there. On the second floor? Yeah. So you said they had stations of the cross up there? No, the stations of the officers. Oh, 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 okay. Like you see, they had, like, you ever been in the Elks Hall? No. Well, the first, up in the front of the Elks is the Jolly Roar. Then the leading night, then the loyal night, and the lecturing night, see. Then you got your treasurer's chair over there and his desk, and you got your secretaries over here. And you got an inner guard. And you got an out, and uh, you got a timer, so that you have to be belong to be able to come in the door. Well, in them days, you know, the Robert Emmets were not; <laughs> they were the, an outlaw. The literary society was; they were kind of like a, uh, a splinter arm of the IRA. 
But they also met in the hall. They used to have a dance up there, at least when we were kids. The big day was St. Patrick's Day. You know. Man, they'd have the parties up there. My dad told me when they first came here, the parades used to start up there. Right at the high bring up, then they marched downtown. They had the Robert Emmett's, they had the drum and bugle corps, they had the whole bit. And they'd march downtown from up here. Well, who, who was the leader of the drum and bugle corps for the Hibernians? Oh, I had not oh, right remember that. Well, your dad was in the Robert Emmett's? No, he was a Hibernian. He was a Hibernian. Did you know anybody who was in the Robert Emmett's? Mm -hmm. Did you ever? I know, like I say, I could say some things, but <laughs> he got me on film there. And, uh, if you want to shut it off for a minute, I could tell oh, you. That's fine. Well, what about the the Saint Saint George's Hall now? Were no, you, were yeah. you ever inside that? Oh, that's where the Degree of Honor was when we were kids. They had a Degree of Honor Society. My mom paid a nickel a week, so we could go. Me and Elaine would go to the. It was like a protective society when we were kids. It was I don't know if you ever got any in church like that. It was the K the Saint Philip and Jacob Lodge. That was the Boha, the Slovak, the, the, the uh, Croatia Lodge. Still runs today. Cost 50 cents a month or something to belong to it. And they, I don't know, it was insurance policies or something. But anyway, now right on the other side of the Hibernian Hall was the barbershop. Billy McCarthy owned that. Then on the corner was Marg and Joe Bolandi had a little candy store there. A little bit of a candy store right there. Then upstairs, the blind Judge McNamara, who played the greatest fiddle you he ever heard, he lived with two of his nieces, Marie and Anne. Their names were McDonald. But Marie was a single lady, and her sister then married Dolly Rogers, who was a brother to Bitter Rogers here. He was a timekeeper over the con. They had two boys. But anyway, he could play that violin. He was a justice of the peace, Judge McNamara. She played the violin, Marie. Then there was Johnny Doherty. He played the piano. He lived on West Center Street. And the guy they called Yankee Dan Sullivan and Babyface Harold Sullivan. One was the tenor and the other one. Yankee Dan Sullivan, when he talked, you swore he was four basements down. That's a voice he had, big bruises. They were all in the choir at St. Lawrence's. Mrs. Grimes lived over on Pacific Street. My aunt, Eva, Uncle John's wife, they all played. They played 11 o'clock mass. They had the violins. They had the whole bit. Oh, I'll tell you, could they sing? But, like, and then, you know, the other side of the street, going up Main Street, was the corner to the Wall Street was the Mullen House. Then you had Doll's Drug Store. Not the Doll that lived down South Main is the druggist, but the Doll. You know the Scandi bars down Main Street? Right. All right. There was a drug store down there. That was the other Doll. He was Woody Doll. Well, what do you remember about the Mullen House? Oh, the greatest place in the world. When I was a kid, the Mullen House had a gymnasium. It was called the Young Centerville Young Men's Athletic Club. They had one handball court. They had a pummel horse. They had parallel bars. They had tumbler mats. And they used to have cards. You had it belong to the club. It cost a dollar or something a year to belong to the club. But that's where they right up, halfway up on that picture I had that I see on you. It's over there in that other thing. That's where the doorway led into the to the club there. Reach that top pole in there. Or in the lower left is one of the Centerville Men's Athletic Club. Right, you see where the two do kind of the splits in the building? Mullen House now. Okay. So in okay. the now this ran just sec John. Okay, now it's about the Mullen House. Let me get that up close. Alright. Alright, now tell tell me about the Mullen House. This is Main Street. This is Mullen Street. The street above at the end of it was Well Street. Now we're talking one square block. The Mullen House encompassed. It ran from here over to the corner of Minor and Mullen, and it ran backwards to the corner of Main 
and Weld Street. Okay. There was 125 rooms in there for single men, and then the back part of it was living quarters for families. So which would be the back, away from? Uh, On the Weld Street, okay. way up here. Going up past the end of this here. All right. So, how would you go into how would you go into the Mullen House? On Mull Mullen Street. Okay. You yeah. walked along. There was a there was a great big. Uh, you walked along a wooden sidewalk. It was up off the groundways. But, and then you come to the front door, which went upstairs to the family part of it. And then there was a the door that went into the dining room. And off the dining room went the stairways. Then you could come in the back door of it, which was on Wells Street. The mall house almost went all the way t to Minor Street. And then there was the big yard, and then there was the big two-story barn where the cows were. They had six or eight milking cows. They had a couple of calves in the spring of the year. They had chickens. They had three or four pigs. And this was all for the milk was for the but the pigs in it. Then the Harringtons owned a great big beef ranch up at Pablo, up in the Flathead, and that's where they raised the cattle. It was up there. So they pretty much put all their food together. They they raised their own food for the Mullen House. Yeah, when they when the oldest daughter when they bought the the one down on Broadway East Broadway Street, she had a big kitchen. She had a dining room in there too. She put the buckets up too, see. For the ship, the big ship? Yeah, for, no, for her garden house. What was that called? I don't know. Well, what was that called? Mm -hmm. Down on Broadway Street there? But anyway, she served the guys too. See, when you worked there or you lived in the one house, you got breakfast, a bucket, and supper. That was it. They put up <laughs> hundreds of buckets. So, 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 so putting the lunch together was called putting up a bucket. Yeah, putting up the bucket, yeah, just like a, just like a what do you call would, it? Would more than one man live in a room? I mean, change shifts. Or? There were some of the rooms had doubles. Some of the rooms had uh, two beds in. Some had single rooms. And but I mean, the, there was one big room, a dormitory, like. So it was, but I mean, would would different men use the same bed yeah, depending yeah. on their yeah. shift? Like they a hot bed. They said that. They shift to get out in the graveyard, shift got in. Yeah. <laughs> but they had, uh, when I was a kid, you couldn't believe it. And they worked at the con, they worked at the, ba the Badger, they worked at the Steward, they worked at the original. Most of them worked right around here. They worked at the High Or. All the, or the Black Rock are all up in this area up here. They all worked in the same work, walking distance of where. Now, why, why would you go into the, the Mullen House? Oh, <laughs> Jimmy Hanley lived there, and or Jimmy and Danny, they were the twins. They were maybe, oh, maybe four or five years older than me. Everybody used to go into the house. <laughs> okay, it was like a community center. Yeah, the, the morning's papers were dropped there. The bundles were dropped there. Yeah. And then, as long as the house ran, that's where the papers were dropped. 